welcome. This is Melissa Arma with the Stock Swoosh, and I wanted to review back from the expiration date of January 7th. I did do a beginner results of this. I wanted to do advanced trader results of this. I'm trying to do that more this year. Show higher risk and lower risk for people. And I did a video on beginner. I thought I did one in advance. I never did. So I'm doing this today. This allows you to see how you could be profitable and what trades you can take and at what risk. Again, win ratio is 75%. In this case, when you have an advanced risk, you can do all the trades. Sometimes with the beginner risk, some trades are priced out. If you have, for example, a $1,000 risk per trade, you can't do an Amazon that costs 5,000. So I wanted to make sure to do this week because I'd done the prior week for advanced trader. And again, the beginner week of this week of expiration, January 7th, is on my YouTube if you want to go look at it. So let's review what happened here this week. So this was all the options called this week. Second week of the year, win ratio is 75%, and the advanced trade of profits was 63,100. The average risk was $8,000 per trade. So let's go over it. Again, there were three winners, zero break-evens, one loser, and four trades. And we'll, we'll go over exactly what the trades were in a minute. So advanced trade of profits, 63,100. You had to risk a total of 30300 to take the positions then to make the profits. Again, you could have taken less risk. I do have that video on YouTube. Return on investment, 208%. You know, this is good. 75% win ratio is good. So these were all options called with an expiration date of 1.7. You don't hold every trade to the end of the day if the trade is up already earlier in the week. If a trade goes the day that I call it, you can get in, you can get out. Some do, some no. So that's up to you. But again, to hold to the very last day, which would have been the seventh here, you don't do that unless you're up so far through the strike that you think it's going to make it, make it worthwhile. And I really, to be honest with you, don't do that. If I'm holding the last day, it's because I'm down in the trade. I was never up or I missed my exit <clears throat> and I'm looking for it to turn around. So let's go back here and look. This, this trade was called on December 29th. It was the 400 Qs. We did put to expire the seventh. So let's take a look at the 29th was here. Again, this was 2021. This was a put, was a gap down. Closed here, gap down. Fell, 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 boom. And again, this actually had some really nice follow through even here past the expiration date in this, but you could have you know, gotten the trade, got in and out before because it had the momentum to the downside. It was a put. It was called on the 29th and you would have exited here on the 6th but I just want to show you it continued on the 7th and actually the movement, the direction I was calling the cues continued even here on the following Monday if you had wanted to do it out longer. Now, typically if I'm calling something like, again, I wouldn't call this a tight call for timing here, but it was over the holidays. So you could have given a little bit more of a cushion and you could have squeezed a little bit out of it. So the very last day of expiration, again, not saying you should ever do that. Exit was here, the 6th, the day before. This was profitable here. You can see it was through the strike. You could even got out here. This fell all the way down here to 384. This low in here was 380. Again, 400 puts. This down in here was 378. But look at where it went then. It did go all the way down to 368. That actually went 32 points um, down from that initial move that I called. So you could have done it out an extra week. Sometimes you can look at the cost and make a determination for yourself if you want to give it an extra cushion. But in this in this type of environment, quite frankly. I, I don't think that's a bad idea. I, I've, I've been thinking about that myself. But for now, I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing. Cost was $3.90 per contract. 20 contracts, risk is $7,800. Sold at 18, profit $28,200 on one trade. You check it, you waited, got the drop, got the movement. Again, this is about momentum. It's momentum in the gap. In this case here, it was selling. Selling pressure to the downside. Return on investment, 362%. Beautiful trade. Beautiful trade. And again, if you can't watch the trades to watch the targets, which I, which I do have in the letter, you can put an order out to sell it at, at whatever order you want, at 50%, 100%. I tell people to watch it. But honestly, if you can't, maybe you should just put in a sell order out after you take the trade. This was the Tesla 1150 calls. We went long here. Did this on the 3rd. Oh, here. Yeah, this was the beginning of the year. Close to your gapped up, rallied. Again, 11.50, take it to the right up here. You can see exactly where I called it right up the strike. This was the 11.50s on the third expiring that day. You could have made, again, good profit, 59%. But these are expensive. So you might take partials in these. You could have got out of one, held the rest, but the rest would have gone bunk. 
But again, sometimes when I'm doing these really, really, really expensive ones, you really do have to watch what's happening with the market because you, you really sometimes need the market in certain things, particular things that you're doing. And again, since Tesla's been added to the S&P, I consider this really a market stock to watch that will go with the market. Cost was $39, two contracts, $7,800 risk, sold at 62, profit 4,600, you're in, you're out. This was one which you could have not have done if you had a beginner risk and didn't risk at least $3,900 a trade, but it was in and out. That's okay. Sometimes if I'm calling it tight or expensive, I'll look at that, or if I don't have the market with me, or if I'm not sure if I'm gonna have the market with me, quite frankly. In fact, let's look at what the market did. Let me just go back and look at the third. Because I have this in here and I forget. Oh, there. Yeah, see? So this was that particular day. The market did go that day, but it failed to go up here. It, this was a baby rally. And then it dropped off. And then you can see Tesla. So you see what I mean here about, I mean, this looks exactly like the market. But Tesla had a bigger rally than the market on that day in the third, which is why the trade went at least to 50%. But it reached the target. And when we go back here, the target was 1,200. Again, the targets are on the letter. Then what was the next one? The SPY 480 calls. So the following day, we had the baby rally in the third. This was the last day, actually, that the SPY made a new high. The Qs have not made a new high at all this year in 2022. The SPY did. It was on January 4th. We gapped up here, called the train, called it out for an expiration of the 7th. It should have gone. Should have gone. Should have worked. Didn't do it. This was the last high in the, in the SPY for 2022. It was the last time it made a high. That's hard to believe. So we did the 480 calls, and this was the one that lost. It, it was up a little bit. I shouldn't say that. It was up a tiny little. It was up a little bit in the day. It, from the time that I called, it was up a little bit, but then it just didn't follow through. So this was one that was a 0% return investment that you could have held down. Again, it could have come back, but it didn't. Here was the drop, and again, it wasn't going to make it. But that was the last high of the market. Interesting looking back at these now. Then we did the Netflix 580 puts, called 1.7. I mean, expired 1.7, called 1.4. Exit on the six, again, in and out. Sometimes these can be pricey. Sometimes they get a good price in these, depending on when you're doing them. Here was the one. No, let me go back to the fourth. Here. Closed here. Got the drop. Boom, 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 boom. Again, here we are. Here's the drop. Come on down. And again, this one you could have held the last day. Again, I don't think that makes any sense to do when it's up, which this was here. It was even up here. But again, this continued. This continued down broke 540. This was a nice one. So it was a 580 puts, $5 contract, which is really not bad for Netflix. 15 contracts, again, advanced trader risk, which is around $8,000 a trade, or you can risk less. 7,500 risk sold at 30, in, out. Beautiful, 500% return investment. Why? Again, 37,500 profit on a 7,500 risk. You can divide that by four or five, six. You can take one contract. Again, I have the beginner trader risk on another slide where it was two contracts for a thousand, but the point is that you could have made 500% return on investment. It never, it never did anything wrong. <laughs> That's my point. There's like no management needed here. People ask me, well, how do you know when to get out? One, I put the targets in the letter. Two, if you can't watch it, you put the sell order in at a return on investment where you're conservative at 50% or 100% to see if it gets filled and watch it. But I think people should learn how to read the charts right. And I think people should be looking at the charts. And when you have the momentum in your direction here, again, you couldn't have screwed this up. This trade was a positive trade. You couldn't have screwed it up. It went from the time I called it, it just went plop. Now, while this does not happen in every single trade where the second I call it, it goes and it goes straight down or straight up. In this case here, it did. It did. In fact, like I said, it actually continued the very last day. Not that anyone should hold there. So really nice, beautiful, beautiful call in the Netflix. And we have trades like that this year. We have, we have so many trades this year. It's so many ridiculous, ridiculous return investments. It's because of the fact that they're there. If they're there, I'm going to see them. I'm going to see them in the gap and they're bringing Anyways, if you'd like to sign up for the Golden Gap uh, course, you can email me for upcoming dates. If you want to sign up to receive the newsletters and get on the subscription, a 12-month subscription is $69.99. The trades are emailed to you. There are no trials. 
And again, if this is something that you think that you want to do, you just email me when you're ready to sign up. You can sign up today. Get the next newsletter tomorrow. Uh, I send a lot of in the pre-market. Okay. Let's go back and look at the times that we are seeing here. Well, no, that was in the afternoon. That was 7.34 in the morning. You're not taking the trade 7.34 in the morning. You wait until the open. Okay. But most of them are sent, honestly, uh, in the pre-market so you can get organized for the day and what you want to do but there are sometimes i send some during the day today today was i sent some during the day so you have to check your email if you're interested in signing up email me at melissa at the stockswoosh.com again the beginner results for this to show are on the youtube on my youtube channel from this week you can go back and look you could you couldn't do the tesla if you had a, a smaller risk of a thousand per trade but again you had good results then even still and made money even with the one that didn't work it's about getting more wins than losers that's how you make money in the market if you're interested in signing up email me at melissa at the stock have a great day everyone